Are you struggling with lag and low FPS in ARC? Well, here is a way how you can fix it. And not just ARC as this will also work with any other game. Introducing Lossless Scaling, an application which you probably might have heard of by now and is set at a price of a meal. Yeah, as this will only cost you 7 bucks and will give you access to AI upscaling and frame generation from 2x all the way up to 4x. And I planned to make this video before but at the time it was not working well with ARC so I scrapped that idea but recently there was a new update adding a new feature as well which is the adaptive frame gen and it's safe to say that things might be promising. So let's get right into this one. So first let's take you through the setup process for loss of scaling and then test each mode with ARC and just see how well it performs. So to get this working, go into your Lossless Scaling app and set up a profile for your game to keep things organized. So click this plus icon and it should open this menu. Then all you want to do is enter the title. In our case, it's going to be art. And there we go. Just hit add and you should have your own game profile. And by default, these are going to be your settings and we are going to tweak some of them. So first, let's start off with the AI upscaling. So let's go ahead and turn off the frame generation and for the AI upscaling, we're going to set the type to NIS, which is the NVIDIA image scaling. I have an NVIDIA card and I'm going to show you why this is better in particular as per my test. Then we're going to set the sharpness to five mode to auto and full screen. Okay. Sync mode. We're going to leave it at off allow tearing for the max frame latency. We're going to set that to two HDR support is going to be turned off. The rest is going to be the same. And for the capture API, you're going to have by default DXGI, but if you're running Windows 11 on 24H2, you can set it to WGC, which will give you better performance. And it is suggested to turn on HDR support when running WGC, but I'm not going to do that as it will consume more VRAM. But trust me, with this setup, it works. And lastly, all you want to do is go into your settings, set up the hotkey so you can toggle this while in game and you don't have to come to your profile and hit the scale button. And that's about it. So now that everything is set up, let's jump into the game and see how well this performs with Arc. So for the settings, we're running at 2K resolution, full screen and anti-aliasing set to Unreal. So we're not using TLSS. And for the graphics, we have gone all out at max settings. So everything is set to Epic. And currently we're getting a frame rate of about 33, 33, 32. Let me just walk around a bit. Yeah, around 30, 33 and inside the house with this lighting and stuff, because global illumination will be a factor. We have dropped to 27 to 26 frames. That is without having the upscaler on. So 32 outside and with the lights and a small base, it is about 26. So now we do have a few more settings to go through for the upscaling to work. So go into your settings, head to your video, and all you want to do is set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 okay after that switch from window mode to windowed full screen and you leave the rest as is and hit save that's it so once that is done as you see we're getting around 43 frames per second without using the upscaling 43 to 44 outside so let's go quickly and hit the hotkey and there you go that has been upscaled. If you notice the trees, it did upscale it. So now we're getting 40 frames per second. It is a slight jump. And if you see at the top left, we're not getting any additional frames from the loss of scaling. It is actually reducing on the output side. So the left hand side is our input frames and the right hand side is what the loss of scaling is producing, which is the output frames. So outside the base, we are getting around 40 frames per second. Inside the base where there's lighting and stuff, still doing okay. 30 frames per second, 31, 32. Nothing that crazy. And I don't think it's going to be worth the AI upscaling just for the minimal uplift. And also, if you notice the artifacting in front of me at the stream that's there, the trees. And if I just pan the camera around, there's a lot of tearing going on and walking. If you're seeing the shadows, it is kind of weird. It's tearing apart in between. If I'm punching, you'll see my hand just disappear in parts. So those are a few things you got to keep in mind when using the upscaling. There is going to be artifacting. There's going to be ghosting. There's going to be a little bit of input delay. 
Let me just do the jump test that I have here. Okay, it's not that bad. So usually when I'll show later in the video with the frame generation, I have to jump from here to make it and I cannot jump from here. If I am without any of the loss of scaling techniques, I can jump from here. That's just a small visual test of the latency I'm getting. So input delay, it is totally fine. I don't think it's a lot, but if you turn on DLSS, you may get even more input lag. So let's just do that. Let's see if DLSS does help. Let's switch it to DLSS, set to quality and save. And now with DLSS on, we're getting again, the same FPS, no difference there around 39, 30, but the input delay has increased ever so slightly, not, not that much. It's still playable at this input delay. It is playable. Now at the start, I told you that NIS is better than LS1 and I'm going to show it to you right now. So if you see, I'm going to switch it off now. Notice the trees on the left hand side. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it back on. Do you see that? There's a visual difference in the upscaling. Let me turn that off again. There we go. It's all blurred out. And if I turn that back on, there we go. Even the shirt, the hat, everything gets crisp. But now let's switch to LS1. So now we're just going to go ahead and switch it to LS1. Here we go. Sharpness, we're going to set to two because that's a sweet spot for me. And let's go back into the game. Here we are. So again, notice the trees because that's the biggest indicator that how much it is sharpening when it's upscaling. That is it. Let's turn that back off. Let's see if you can notice it. It's there slightly, but it's not that visually noticeable. It's turned on now. And it's turned off now. So as you see, it's not that much better than the NIS. I feel the, for me, at least the NIS is way better, but the only thing that I can argue is the LS one does a smoother sharpening and the NIS does a little bit of a harsh sharpening. So it is preference what you would want to do, but for me, I would pick the NIS. Next, let's check out the frame generation as this is what will boost your FPS, be it the fake frames. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And for the frame generation, all you want to do is go on the type and set it to LSFG 3.0. That is the latest one. We're going to do adaptive, but after the fixed one. So go into mode and set it to fixed and target multiply. You're going to set to two and the flow scale. You're going to set it at 75. That's all the settings done. Now go back into your game. And set the resolution back to 2K. Go into full screen mode. And we are going to turn off DLSS so we can check the raw performance. We're not going to use DLSS. So let's go ahead and save it. We will use DLSS later on to see if we get an improvement. For now, I'm going to keep it at Unreal. Let's save. As you can see, the graphics are still at Epic. Let's go back into the game. And now we're getting around 30 frames per second, just like before. 30 to 32. So let's go ahead and activate the frame gen. There we go. So now we're getting around 49 to 52 frames with two times. Let's see if there's any artifacting. Oh, the delay is a lot. This is much more noticeable than the AI upscaling, but that is going to be the cost for running the frame gen. So the latency is really noticeable. There's a lot of tearing as you can see. But you are getting 50, 50 frames per second. The only thing I can think of going bad with such high latency is jumping. I mean, walking, you can control a bit of it. But when you're jumping, it's really difficult because there is a big delay. And if you miss that jump, that's what matters in art because you could either fall to your death or survive with 5 HP and then have a raptor just munch on you. That, that is just arc. But overall, even if you see the bottom of the screen, there's a lot of artifacting happening there and warping around the player. A lot of ghosting when I'm strafing left and right, a lot of tearing. That is going to be a thing when you're using frame generation because this is virtually done. It's not something in game. So this is going to come with the application. But is it playable? Yeah. I mean, 50, 50 to 45 frames is much better. Now let's go inside the base where the lighting is. Okay, we dropped a bit, so we're going back to... No, we're coming back up. Around 30 to 40 frames, I would say, for stable. But we're not getting the 60 frames. So now let's go into settings, turn on DLSS, and see if that helps. Set to DLSS, set to quality, and save. 
So even after turning DLSS on, we're getting about the same frame rate and latency has just become worse and there's more tearing and stuff. The shadow is all glitchy. I mean, if you can play it, but you have to get used to this latency at first. If I would say it would be around 50 to 60 milliseconds of latency, that would be my best guess. But I also do believe that the fog that is going on currently is affecting the performance so if you want to turn that off you can get better so now i've gone ahead and turned off the fog and the cloud to see if we can actually play it with less latency and it seems so i mean i'm getting way better input latency than before jumps are being possible at the edge of the bridge so it's perfectly fine to play at this but you have to sacrifice on the visual fidelity of the clouds and fog screen tearing is still going to be an issue warping near the feet is still going to be an issue but at least you're getting a higher frame rate to play the game at. So next, let's go and set this up to 3x and see how much of the latency do we get. This may be bad. Let's go back into our game. Roll Alt S. And there we go. So now we're getting around 76 frames. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. It's not like I'm falling because I'm dumb. It's just the latency is way too much to handle the character properly because my muscle memory tells me otherwise and it just can't be helped the latency is gotten from worse to way worse and it's terrible i mean if you're seeing the artifacting when i'm panning around that is horrible so i don't think you can play it on 3x at least let's see if you can turn on tlss and save the day i don't think so but we're going to try anyways let's go ahead set tlss even the menu is warping. Look at this. Can you see that? Okay, let's set it to quality. Let's see if this can help at least a little bit. You know what? I think the latency just improved a bit. Slightly, slightly. I mean, it's controllable, but the artifacting, the warping is still pretty bad let's go ahead and turn it up all the way to 4x so same thing again let's hit it to 4x there we go let's go back into the game Control alt s so now we're getting around 95 94 fps latency is just horrible that's gonna be something i even missed that jump uh tearing again major issue look at that Oh god, that's gross. I'm just panning around and seeing everything. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, 4x, not playable. At least for Arc, it's not playable. And lastly, we have the adaptive frame gen. Now, this could be better. So let's go ahead and go into loss of scaling and set that up and try and see if that works with Arc. So all you want to do is go from fixed to adaptive. You want to set the target to your monitor's refresh rate. So mine is 144. So I'm going to set that. Let's unscale this. Let's go back into our game. Let's try the adaptive frame gen. There we go. So we're getting around 126 FPS through loss of scaling. Is it good? Let's check it out. Oh, nope. I mean, there's a lot of warping that's happening around the character while panning around. Latency is playable, but the warping, man, it's too much. I mean, it is 120 FPS, but I don't think anybody want to play with this much warping happening. Inside the base, we're getting around 136 to 112. It is fluctuating a lot, probably due to the global illumination. And now onto the final test where we're going to use the AI upscaling along with the frame generation times two, because that was the best performance we got in the whole video. So let's go and do just that. So for scaling, we're going to go with NIS and keep everything the same and max frame latency to two. For the frame generation, we're going to set it to fixed and the multiplier to two and the flow scale to 75. And for the settings, the resolution is set at 1080p, windowed, full screen, DLSS. We're going to turn it off just for the start of the video. And as for the graphics, everything is set to epic. And let's go check this out. So let's turn on loss of scaling. There we go. So we're getting roughly around 79 to 74. It's fluctuating a lot. So let's see how it's performing. I mean, there's a lot of warping, but latency seems fine. But there's stutters as well. 
I mean, there is a lot of fog, so let's try and reduce that. I'm just trying to see on epic setting what's the max we can get. There we go, that's better. But we're still getting a lot of warping, a lot of hitches, stutters. And it doesn't seem to be that playable with both of them turned on. I'm not sure why this is happening. Probably because I have a lower base CPU. Because I think I'm getting fine frame rates. Because it's 50 when I'm like standstill. But there's a lot of stutter. So maybe the optimization of the game. This is a post-edit Elsevise cut. So I did test it without recording the video or having any overlays. And I must say that times 2 with AI upscaling got me to around 110 FPS. There was no input latency, not that noticeable at least. And there were fewer artifacting and stuff. So I will say it's a buy if you want to play at 2x, AI upscaled, or just 2x. I tried it with the 3x and the 4x, and it was simply still with latency and a lot of artifacting. But if you want to play it at 2x, or if you want to AI upscale it and play it at 2 times frame gen, it is certainly worth the purchase. It gives me stable frame rate, no latency, minimal artifacting, and it is just buttery smooth. So that's it for the post cut. So my final conclusion, if you're thinking of buying loss of scaling is if you have something like mine, what I have set up is a 3500X and an RTX 3080, which is a bottleneck combination. You might not consider buying this unless you want to play it on just 2X or just AI upscaling because those two seem to work really well, but combining them two does not and most of the features does not work with us because we get a base frame rate of 30 and below if you get a base frame rate of 40 you can go with the frame gen times three if you get a base frame rate of 50 you can go again with both the options and get a better performance as there are many videos showing this but i just wanted to show the hard truth if you have an older system and are thinking hey it's just a magic pill i download it i get the fake frames and that's it but it's not, it's much bigger than that because I'm running all the settings, I've showed it to you everything without doing much cuts and it just doesn't seem to work that well for me and it's mainly because of the system being bottlenecked. So I would say that if you are considering buying it, watch the video, think about it if you have the same specs, if you're getting base frame rate below because the more frame rate lost the scaling has to play with, the more better it's going to perform. And I'm not promoting lossless scaling, nor am I sponsored by them. So this is just my testing that I've been doing for a couple of days and just trying to see if I can get better frame rate to give you a good answer on this. But overall, in my opinion, I would say it's not worth the buy, at least at the current state. I would wait till Unreal 5.5, which is going to come out soon, and then maybe think about it. And if it does perform well with the Unreal 5.5 update, I'll make another update video, which will be a shorter version, just testing the basics and seeing if we do better than what we are getting right now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I just wanted to make a full take on the loss of scaling, especially with Arc, and just see if it does perform like the other videos that have been posted. And it just does not, okay? <laughs> At least for us, it doesn't. And there could be factors like the MSI overlay I'm using to show the FPS. I'm also recording the video, which could affect the CPU performance to give me a better result. But you need to have at least 40 to 50 stable frame rate to make this work. If you have anything below it, I wouldn't consider buying this, at least not now. And if you did find this video information, don't forget to smash the like button as it always helps with the algorithm. And subscribe and share around as that always supports the channel. With that, I also signing off and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, peace out.